I've got a Lazy Susan here that um, I'm trying to get done as a gift and depends on how it turns out whether or not I'll give it to but anyhow I've got my paints all mixed up <clears throat> and I'm trying something a little different with the paints and um, <clears throat> these uh, pigments pearl let's see it's pearl white and got it from China um, and uh, claret red mica I used it in a mixture of uh, Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish it's basically a polyurethane polymer and um, I'm gonna see if it will work as a medium for my um, powders and also I put just for good measure I put a, a just a, about a teaspoon if that much of this uh, GAC 800 which is supposed to help with that sort of thing um, also I used um, the other powder I used was the pearl green it's a pigment powder and I added the pearl white to my uh, white mixture that I'm going to use uh, after I do the hammer I don't know for sure how I'm going to do it but anyhow this has silicone in it and uh, so I'm going to try that but I'm using the white that's on here I just put on here is a thin coat and it seems that when you pour the white on there rather than coating it um, it seems like there's too much white on there maybe my white's too thick I don't know I am going to put some pour some white on there but I don't want to have to think about I've got to get enough white on there to cover everything um, without you know it showing through this is done on a particle board uh, I think it's about a almost three quarter of an inch particle board so it needed to be sealed with something to begin with so I just put my white uh, pre-mixed white on there which is the uh, house paint um, Dutch boy uh, house paint that I always use um, let me see if there's anything else I need to say before I start pouring here um, I've decided to use Quinn Magenta, which I used in the last pour. I'm going to use some of the Thalo uh, Blue, which I used in the last pour. And then I'm using the other pigment powders that I just showed you. I also have a little bit of pre-mixed uh, liquid, uh, liquid, Liquitex Basic. It's the gold. They're gold. And I mixed it up. So I'm going to use a squirt or two of that, I think. And let me think I think that's about it let's just uh, see what we can get done here and get it done as quickly as possible I know everybody's busy don't have time to look at a long video but um, sometimes it takes a little longer to work it out but uh, like I said if it gets too slow for you you can just fast forward through it or if you don't like me blabbering on you can mute it um, I'm trying to give information as I see it um, so I may not talk all the time if that's okay just as I see something that I thought maybe you might need to know I'll say something about it okay here we go I'm gonna get a cup and I don't think it makes too much difference I'm gonna try to keep the amount of paint down too I, I've purposely used this little cup trying to force myself to keep the paint not so much paint we'll see how that works and okay so I've got the white in I think I'm going to put a little bit of the thalo blue a little bit of the quin magenta my thought is it maybe it'd make purple and then I'm going to separate it with a little bit more white and uh, then I'm going to try this claret red I don't know about it it kind of looks like a rusty red to me when I mixed it up I was kind of disappointed in the color but you know who knows it may be it may turn out pretty I'll put a little bit more of the white in because I don't know about that red okay and now I'm going to put some of the green in that's that um, let's see what is it pearl green it's called all right I'm going to start out with that and see what happens hmm okay this paint has already beginning to dry 
it's still tacky. So I'm thinking, oh, I didn't get any of the gold in. If I don't get it right over here where I see it, well, it doesn't happen. And I also thought I might use this gold to put in specific spots. So I think what I'm going to do is, since I've already got white in here, I'm going to um, stir it just a little bit. I don't want to get it too mixed up. Now I think I'm going to do is like I would do if I was doing a resin pour. Just to be different. I don't know. I'm thinking like a ribbon. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Now, I'm going to, now I'm going to take my white and start pouring it in kind of close to it. I don't know, I may have wished I had put more white on here. Oh well, we'll see what happens with this. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm just going to get in here with my hands and uh, move it around a bit to cover some canvas. I mean, you know, cover some space. That's what I'm thinking. Try not to spread out the paint too much yet. Although I don't know if it matters since I'm going to splat it to with the hammer in a bit. I'm telling you if you haven't done if you haven't done the hammer smash this is a good season to do it when you're frustrated <laughs> I can tell you. You can just let all your frustration go on this hammer smash and um, might get a little bit more frustrated if it's spiders everywhere but oh well it's just paint so I wouldn't worry about it too awfully much. Okay here we go. Here comes the fun part. Um, get my hammer out. My husband came in the other day and he looked around and he says, I've been wondering where that hammer went. <laughs> I said, well, it's mine now. Buy you a new one. Now you see that? <laughs> Woohoo! I think I hit that one a bit hard. Oh my goodness. I got it over here on my computer. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. I think maybe not quite so hard. I wish I hadn't went all the way around there. Okay, let's see what I got here before I go any further. The white paint does kind of come back in on it, so you have to be aware of that. But you also have to be aware that this really intense color gets darker. And you know that. So I think I'm going to leave that for right now, quit the splatting, and kind of step back. Woo, I've got this all over me. Kind of step back and see. So give me a minute here. Let me look at this and see what I think I've got to do. Or what I'm going to try, anyhow, put it that way. I got so much paint, I got it all over my apron, I've got it all over me probably on the floor. I don't care. We're doing art. Who cares? Hmm. I see a spot right here why I probably shouldn't have splatted it the second time because it um, needs some paint in it. So this is a spot where I'm thinking I'm going to drizzle a little gold and maybe touch it here and there. And like I don't know. Spread it about. And it's really cool how when you use your finger, how many neat um, colors it starts mixing. It's 
just I just think it's amazing it gives you that free form um, look without hardly any any trouble at all I mean you don't even really have to think about it you just plop your finger down there okay so I've got a little bit of gold there and I think I want to bring a little bit more gold someplace else through here so I think we'll just drop it here and there see what happens yeah that looks good and I do wipe my finger off from time to time otherwise you kind of lose track of it kind of looks like gold leaf coming through all right I think I'm going to kind of follow a line up that away and where the paint is too thick it probably won't work too good so you just cover it up and if that's the case well then so be it I think I've got a few things over here I want to drop maybe I'll just put a line of it there and where's my spoon let me see what happens when I do this like it's a gold ribbon all right that works pretty good hmm Let's see I think I need to do something there okay that works pretty good main thing is I don't want to overdo it and that is really easy to do see like this is really light I don't even know if you can see it that well but it's really pretty with the way it is and if I go back over it it's not gonna be so good so I'm going to try to restrain myself from going back over it. All right. This is a little bit dark in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit more of the silicone, the white with the silicone in it in there and see what happens. And maybe I will blow on it too. And see what happens. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Okay. Hmm. This over here is really pretty. It's all it's very pastel-y looking, and um, I think uh, I think it's balanced pretty good, or at least I, it's okay for me right now. Again, I don't want to overdo it. And some places like right here, it's a little drip of paint. But it was underneath the white and when you blow on it it brings out these really pretty little bits of paint there you go that's good this down here turned out awesome it was just a little drip of that um, red paint and maybe I need to this right here is still too dark I'm going to put a little bit more of that white in there and see if I can get it to real frustrating thing is when you look at it and say okay that's perfect I want it to stay there well you know it's not going to so 
don't don't fret too long to make it perfect just do it until you can say okay that looks okay uh, because you can really overdo it quickly like right there it's a little bit too much white I mean dark color and I know when it gets everything said and done that's going to be really dark I think when this dries it's going to be really pretty because that iridescent uh, mica powders that I put in that pigment is um, when I blow on it it's coming through really pretty alright I'm going to put a little bit of fire on it and I think I'm going to call that good alright let's see what happens here that's going to be it I'm going to show you what I'm going to frame this out with and I don't know if I'm going to do a video or not but I had this frame it was an old antique frame and I had um, redone it to make it look like you know I guess you'd call it aged copper and um, for some reason it fell off the wall and uh, busted and had a big it was a, one of those mirrors that like they call it piano mirrors they used to put behind pianos a long time ago anyhow I was just sick about it and I thought what can I do with this so then I thought about doing this for a Christmas present and I thought you know it needs a frame around it I could do the sides, but it just needs a frame. So that's when I came up with that idea. So my husband fixed it for me. And we'll see. We'll see how that works. I think it's going to work great. Ooh, I better go through here and check. I see some different levels of white paint. But there's no point in you sitting here watching that. So I'm going to um, end the video. And I didn't do too bad. 18, looks like 18 minutes. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a like and subscribe. And um, I'll come back, and every time I come up with a wild idea, I'll come back and show you what I'm doing. Maybe it will give you some uh, ideas on doing something in your own art. And that's how I get ideas. I just watch YouTube, and then I kind of adapt it to my own style of art. And it's helpful for me so I'm hoping it's helpful for you so again y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and we'll see you on the flip-flop otherwise I may get like I said I may go ahead and put up that uh, video with the doing the framing we'll see if not I may just show it when it's done so you can see what it looked like um, I'm gonna say uh, goodbye for right now this is Barbie